This was the law enforcement pistol of the early 1900s, the Colt Police Positive. Chambered in the popular revolver calibers of the day, from the 32 short to the 38 special, this revolver provided the design foundation for future Colt revolvers. Hi, I'm Jim Humphrey from Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training, and today we are going to disassemble this Colt Police Positive. This pistol evolved through three generations, starting with the Colt New Police in 1897, and then with the advent of the hammer block in 1907, the Colt Police Positive, like this one I have here. And then in 1908, the heavier Colt Police Positive Special. Colt Police Positives were manufactured until about 1947. This revolver was manufactured in 1924 with a four inch barrel and chambered in the 38 Colt New Police, or what we more commonly call today the 38 Smith & Wesson. Let's have a look inside. Of course, prior to doing any work on a pistol, always make sure it's empty and remove all live ammunition from the work area. The grips are removed with a single screw. On these older guns, it's always a good idea to put a little penetrating oil on the escutcheon nut. The crane is held by the crane lock, which is a pin that is grooved to mate with the crane lock screw. Removing the crane lock screw will allow the crane lock to loosen so the crane and cylinder can be removed. The crane lock pin just slides out. The side plate is retained by two screws. These screws are very cosmetic. They should always be removed with care using the correct size screwdriver and penetrating oil. These screws are identical, but it's always a good idea to keep screws separate. The side plate is removed with a few soft taps of the plastic hammer. The side plate lifts out with the cylinder latch. The latch simply slides out from the side plate. The latch spring is very small and easily dropped. Be careful. Removing the main spring requires some strength. Here, I'm using smooth jaw, parallel grip pliers to ensure I don't nick the edge of the spring. To remove the hand, the rebound lever is lifted up with a brass punch and the hand lifts straight out. The rebound lever pin is pressed out and the rebound lever lifts straight out. The hammer is removed by pushing the latch pin forward and rotating the hammer back and lifting straight out. The trigger, the safety lock, and the safety lever lift out as a group. The latch pin will slide out. The bolt is retained by a screw, and the bolt has a very small spring. When removing the bolt, the spring is difficult to retain. This is one of those springs you can only drop once, because you'll never find it again to drop it a second time. The bolt has to be lifted off the hinge point and then slid out of the frame. The trigger group parts separate easily. The main spring stirrup and the strut are held in place with very tight fitting pins. The firing pin is held with a rivet. We'll leave those parts in place for this disassembly. The disassembly of the cylinder group begins with the ratchet. The ratchet is removed by unscrewing it. Measuring the depth of the shaft isn't absolutely necessary, but it can help during assembly. Because of the sharp edges, gripping the ratchet with a rag or piece of leather makes it easier to unscrew. It has a normal right-hand thread. Never use pliers or steel tool to remove the ratchet. 
Now the crane and ejector rod can be removed from the cylinder. To remove the ejector rod from the crane requires a special tool. The tool engages these two notches and will unscrew the crane bushing from inside the crane, releasing the ejector rod. Assembly of the cylinder group begins by inserting the crane into the cylinder and threading the ratchet back on the ejector rod. Just as before, this is easier accomplished with a rag. It is critical that the ratchet be correctly aligned. Two of the ratchet arms are notched to mate with the cylinder face. The correct depth is fairly obvious, but the micrometer check gives us reassurance. The bolt spring is inserted into the spring hole in the bolt and the bolt reinstalled into the frame. Punch is handy to compress the bolt spring. The bolt will seat on the hinge point. Here's a trick for installing small screws. Put a little grease on the end of the screwdriver to hold the screw. The bolt screw is firmly installed and the bolt checked to ensure freedom of movement. The trigger group is best installed as a pre-assembled group. The safety lever has two slots. The long slot accepts the pin from the safety lock. Fit the trigger on top of the safety lever and the safety lever on top of the safety lock. Fit the trigger and the safety lever onto their respective pins in the frame. The assembly requires some aligning, but drops straight in. With the trigger forward, the latch pin will slide in. Then with the trigger back and the hammer pulled back, the hammer will drop straight down on its pin. Here, I'm performing a few function checks before moving on. The rebound bar is next. It has a pivot pin to hold it in place. The pin must be flush on both sides, which here required a light tap from the plastic hammer to set it in. If you don't have one of these brass and plastic hammers, go get one. The hand has a pin that fits into the hole in the trigger. In order for the hand to seat properly, the rebound bar must be pushed down as the hand is installed. Note how the hand has a little spring action caused by the rebounder bar. The main spring has a small tab on it that mates to the hole in the frame. Slip the main spring under the hammer stirrup and make sure the tab fits in the hole in the frame. This is the last opportunity for a light application of oil. The latch is fitted in the side plate. Note, the hole in the back of the latch has to fit over the latch pin when the side plate is fitted to the frame. The side plate is pressed into place and a few light taps of the plastic hammer should be all it takes to get a nice flush fit. The, the two side plate screws when firmly fastened with the proper screwdriver, we'll hold the side plate in place. With the cylinder in place, the locking pin can be installed. Note how the crane lock pin and the screw are specially machined to fit together. Put them in place as an assembly. This is another one of those cosmetic screws, so take your time and use the correct screwdriver. The assembly is complete with the attachment of the grips and the performance of a function check.
Well, that's the Colt Police Positive. You can see how similar it is to all the other Colt pistols that followed. It was the revolver that all of the revolvers looked up to. I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. I hope you enjoyed that. Till next time, enjoy your firearms, join the NRA, and be safe out there. Thanks. Mm -hmm.